Yo, yo, what up, y'all? Welcome to the world famous Behind the Baller, aka BTB podcast. Coming to you live and direct from Hollywood, California. BTB is a top ranked world famous podcast. Don't get it fucked up, right? This is a Dust Brothers production. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what you call professional podcasting, all right? And that crystal clear sound that you hear. That is 8K high Doge Finition Museum quality podcasting you're listening to, all right? VVS Clarity Podcasting. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the weekend wrap up. By the way, I'm Ben Baller, your host, Never Ben Humble, also known as the Korean Liam Neeson, aka the Wash Lord, aka the real Forrest Gump of hip hop. So you know I had a hectic week, right? Probably one of my most hectic weeks of 2021, okay? All kinds of shit going on. And actually my body is still sore from the Disneyland fuckery, all right? And I'm still on my diet is just, man, fuck. Anyways, guys, so let's start with some good news, okay? On Thursday, Coinbase, one of the largest, most popular and famous crypto exchanges announced that they will be picking up Dogecoin and it should be on their platform ready to trade, buy, sell in the next six to eight weeks, okay? That was a major, huge Shiba milestone, okay? That's a flex for the Doge community, all right? But listen, more about crypto later because there's a lot to talk about, all right? About to get into some motherfucking rants like a motherfucker. So listen, hope you're driving, hope you're working, whatever the fuck you're doing, pay attention. Uh, Thursday night, Olivia Munn, as you guys might know, I kind of ripped into her a little bit. Not too hard, right? You know what I'm saying? But I, as I said, some things about her that weren't so nice, right? Uh, on Instagram stories, on here on the podcast. Well, Olivia Munn slid into my DMs, Okay. And she left me a kind of like sarcastic, you know, troll DM. And I opened it up and I left her on red. You know, like, fuck it. I mean, someone must have fucking DM'd her the fucking thing, right? Like, boom, here it is. And, um, you know, I didn't really know what to say. Now, a friend of mine actually dated her a while back, whatever. And uh, I don't really know much about the girl, right? And I definitely didn't think she was really Asian, Okay, I just don't know shit about it. I didn't know. Um, I remember seeing her on the cover of Maxim magazine when it was like Maxim was the shit, right? Like hardcover. It's a big deal to be on fucking Maxim back then. And um, I remember kind of reading it, but I don't remember hearing anything about Asian shit. So whatever, you know, I didn't know much about the girl, but I do know she has a smart mouth, right? And she's ready to fucking fight. She's ready for Freddy. So I was like, all right, fuck it then. We'll just be fucking talking shit then. What was good? What's up? So... I started like, I was like, you know what? I, I just was just bored, whatever. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to reply to her on Thursday night. Seeing the DM, I was like, yo, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I forgot why she popped up. Oh, you know what? I follow Daniel Wu. He follows me as well. And then he got this uh, platinum quick strike that happened in the Bay. I'm sorry I couldn't be there, guys. But, uh, you know, it was for Stop Asian Hate and everything. I think she had said something somewhere. But she pulled up on my fucking Explore page. And so I decided to reply back to her because she was like, who is Ben Baller? Or I like, had this like weird thing. And so I replied back. I was like, yo, man, congratulations. You know, I'm, you, you've been killing it, especially for someone who's only 17% Asian, right? And I was on full asshole mode. I think I was high, you know, big surprise. She replies back like 20 minutes later, okay? And she crushes me with nothing but class and kindness like, she's like, yo, you have a beautiful family. Hope your family's doing okay in these times. By the way, I'm 50% Chinese, Vietnamese. Um, my mom is Asian. She's a refugee from here and this, that, whatever. She goes, I think your wife is beautiful. You know, I've admired you for a long time, blah, blah, this and that. She hit me with all this classy shit with kindness. So I only had one thing to do that I could do. You know, I had to submit, like, my bitch assness. Okay, my bitch assness came out thick, right? And you know, everyone here in the BTB army knows how much I promote. Don't apologize. 
No apologies. Fuck that. Never apologize. And let me tell y'all, she definitely got an apology from me. Not only did I make it public on my own, like, willingness, you know what I'm saying? I told her again. Now, again, I didn't know much about Olivia, but I proceeded to low-key shit on here, you know, on here, on the BTB podcast. And when she told me that she fucked with me heavy and was super bummed out that I spoke bad on her, I was like, oh, man, Ben, like, fuck. Fucking Ben bully, right? And she's like, you know, one time during an award show, I was really hyped because a friend of mine let me borrow a piece of jewelry that you made and whatever. And she told me how, how dope she thought I was and what I've done for Asians in America and how progressive I am and blah, blah, this and that. And I was like, at that point, I was like, yo, just put your feet out. I'm ready to kiss your feet. Like, honestly, like, I don't know what the fuck, man. We chatted for fucking a long time, for literally probably an hour, maybe even longer. So now we're best friends. And uh, I don't fuck, I'm just fucking with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And, and I didn't even find out till after. I was like, damn, she dated fucking Aaron Rodgers for a few years. Like, goddamn. Like, Aaron is the GOAT, right? Like, I never had no problem with, I mean, of course, you know, fuck them when we're playing them, but... You know, dude is a, you know, he's very serious. I mean, is he top 10 QB? Yeah, probably. He's a GOAT. And that's crazy they dated, you know. But, uh, you know, we talked for a long time. And now, uh, I guess, I don't know, when either of us get some free time, you know, our schedules are, you know, kind of crazy, I guess. I'm sure. I don't know what she does exactly. I know she's an actress or a mom. I don't really know. But we're definitely going to get some coffee, probably get a meal somewhere. I don't know. I, you know, I'm just, but I'm hyped. That, you know, the beef is squashed and my wife is hyped too. She's like, why are you starting to blah beef and all this other bullshit, whatever. And like, I don't know. But yeah, no more drama with Olivia Munn. That shit's done. And uh, that's how my Thursday night ended because it was late at night. Okay. Friday morning, you know, getting my weekend started. I give away a gold and diamond Ethereum chain to a person who I can't pronounce his name. I don't want to fuck up his name again, but he's actually from... SoCal, so congrats. He's probably listening right now, and you're gonna get your chain this week. By the way, guys, you know we give away fly shit, okay? Okay. My next card is Fernando Tatis, and you know Tatis is probably one of the hottest dudes in the hobby, and I'm gonna fuck people up with this shit, all right? The card drops next Monday, the 24th, okay? And I'm going to give away either a Dogecoin chain or I'm going to give away my BB, yes, my Ben Baller logo BB chain off my fucking neck. It's going to be a big fucking deal. We're going in, right? Try to move motherfucking 35,000 cards. I don't give a fuck what the fuck it is. About to get the motherfucking Project 70 started, okay? Also on Friday, my black truffle, truff, right? Hot sauce, gold bottle edition, dropped and it was a huge success did i mention that truff this is a respected elite hot sauce they have never done a collaboration with anyone before this is their first collab so i'm very honored okay we sold more bottles of truff in a few hours than they usually sell in a month or that they ever have in a month how about that okay so i fucking love you guys for supporting me all right. I want you to tell me what you think, honestly. Just because I love it, maybe you guys might not, but I love this. It's the fucking taste for me. Okay. It is literally my favorite hot sauce. But as some of you may know, I'm still on the very strict diet, right? Until this disgusting fat body of mine loses 20 more pounds so I could look good in some grown man short. Swim trunks, all right, because I'm going to Cabo, right, and uh, what is it like, shit, just less than six weeks, just under six weeks, so that means I got to lose about three pounds a week, which I think I could do, okay, so now Friday night, I'm like, shit, man, we got a huge NFT drop in, and like, man, yo, look, my head is so clouded with all the shit from my drops, Disneyland, kids, work like i'm at my new office all day friday you know morning at new going over all the shit getting ready for my if and co flagship store reopening right we've remodeled we've expanded twice the size of the store in the fucking worst time ever in the pandemic at the beverly center 
right? Ready to go full gangster mode, back in the jewelry shit, right? So I got a lot on my mind, and I realized now, didn't know Friday, didn't know Saturday, didn't know until Saturday afternoon that I dropped the fucking ball on something crucial, okay? In regards to my NFT, right? And now to make, you know, things worse, Nick Diamond is also busy. He's always got a bunch of fucking releases. He's got a hundred, no, maybe 200 employees, right? Runs a big company, okay? So we pushed and promoted and marketed the NFT drop heavy. It's my first NFT. It's our first NFT together, obviously. It's his second NFT in, in general. And I am going to be 100% fully transparent, okay, with this. I want all you guys to hear me out and you funny face motherfuckers who think that I would ever cap about my actual business when in real life I've actually downplayed my actual accomplishments, all right? Be like, oh, Ben, let's talk about it. Yeah, I love to talk, but guess what? There's still a shit ton of stuff that I don't talk about, okay, all right? And me downplaying my brand or downplaying shit that I have everything else is actually totally off-brand for me, for the Ben Bar that most of you guys know, okay? But I do that because, believe it or not, I actually do feel bad about what has happened in the last year or so during this pandemic, okay? Even though I have no reason to, I've clearly earned every dollar and then some, That I've made, okay? I've earned it, right? But at the very same time, seeing the homeless situation in LA, seeing the homeless situation in San Francisco, seeing the fucked up turmoil that's going on in the world, okay? I know there are a ton of people who have lost their life savings, lost their businesses that they had for years, for decades of work that they put in. And during the pandemic, you know, with the shutdowns and shit, they lost it. There's people arguing, saying this and this. And I hear fucking, I hear smart people who are good attorneys, like Mark Gallegos and these people saying like, look, this is the dumbest thing in the world. They should have never shut down. And they all say that. And it's like, none of them lost a family member. And it's would be like, oh, well, fuck it. If it's, everyone has their opinions. And now Mark Gallegos, if you guys don't know who that is, Chris Brown's attorney, but he's also a very big attorney in general. He's an Armenian dude. I don't know how he doesn't have the fucking Armenian life, but he's Armenian. He's from LA. He's a huge attorney, right? He has a podcast. And he talks about things and he says shit that's crazy, but he's a good attorney, right? And um, I mean, just the shit that he's done with Chris Brown alone is crazy, but he talks about how the pandemic has ruined so many businesses and Gavin Newsom's an idiot and he is an idiot, but at the same time, people don't fucking get like, you know, you don't think that the whole world shut the fuck down so what the fuck happened in China? What the fuck happened in Australia? What happened in all through Europe? Like, are they stupid too? Like, you know, just some of the shit these people, I just don't get it. Come on, you're, he's a grown ass man. He's like in his 60s. Like to say stupid ass shit like that and think like the pandemic wasn't a real big deal. Like, you know, and COVID can't be transmitted outside. Like what the fuck are you talking about? You sound absolutely fucking stupid and you're a smart dude. Anyways, I just think there are definitely tone deaf moments that are going on still right? The podcast is a little different. You could hear the context in my voice and things, right? But I do feel bad for people who've lost their businesses and lost their life savings, lost the shirt off their backs, okay? Shit is heartbreaking. But there's guys out here on Instagram still whose entire pages are filled with their yellow Lamborghini Huracan or their, even like a fucking Gallardo or their M3 that they're so proud of. And that, that's cool, right? But as much as I love my cars and I'll always be a car enthusiast, I don't post a lot of my fucking cars. You know, if you only see two car posts in the last three or four months, like, oh, it's a lot. It's because I don't post shit in between. I don't really post that much at all. I'm talking like 18 posts a month and it's the same fucking car. And it's like, you know, different angles. It's like I could post a shit ton of stuff. I could post a different car every single fucking day and different things. I just don't. I don't really post, I don't post fucking fly clothes unless they're given to me by somebody and I'm showing appreciation, right? You don't see me rocking Gucci and things like that or fucking whatever, Louis Vuitton stuff. I don't, I don't, okay? I would say that maybe 10% or less of some sort of materialistic item or car or something actually makes it to an actual post, right? 
It's a very low number. That means 10% out of 100 gets posted, okay? If it's jewelry, not even all my jewelry gets posted. A lot of times people want to be discreet, especially some of these Saudi princes and these real rich people. They don't want to be tagged. Some people want it out there, boom. And I'm like, yo, if you don't want to tell the story, you know, even though the piece is dope, if I can't really say who it was for, then fuck it. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to post it. Post it on the jewelry page. I got IF and Co. I don't need to fucking post it on my shit, right? But like 10% makes it to an actual post, maybe, okay? Now, my stories, you might see 25% of like maybe some fly shit. Some expensive kicks, I don't know, nice restaurant, something, whatever, something that is kind of a flex. You see some car shit on there, okay, on the stories because they, you know, delete after 24 hours, okay? But check this out. Around 40% of some fly shit, whether it be some materialistic or something, I talk about cars or purchase something or, you know, more descriptive about my Bitcoin wallet and earnings, say about 40% of that makes it here to the BTB podcasts, okay? So with all that said, when buying NFTs, I forgot to mention probably the most important thing ever to fucking mention, okay? You must buy NFTs with cryptocurrency, okay? To be more specific, you should buy it with Ethereum. I think you can pay with Bitcoin in some of these places, but no matter what you, listen, no matter how much talk there is about cryptocurrency recently and it's all over the place here and there. It's a bunch of people who have, you know, Shiba coins or some other bullshit, you know, whatever. They don't really have a whole lot of money. But in actuality, there's a very small percentage of people who are still in the crypto game, okay? And that's okay. But it's definitely something, you know, it is the future. There's there's no cap about that, 100%. And NFTs will be mentioned like how people talk about social media. It is going to be incorporated into everything. Now, crypto is still a very new entity to a lot of people, okay? And very few people have money in Ethereum or Bitcoin, okay? So with that said, there is a law, right? Or a credit card, like, bylaw or rule called KYC, Okay, you can Google it. I don't want to elaborate on KYC, but KYC is something that is notoriously known to happen on NFT platforms, okay? It blocks purchases in certain states, and because this is technically a decentralized product, most credit cards get declined. And in the process of buying my NFTs, right, the process just to buy one of our NFTs is like, easily a 30 minute process if you want to use a credit card okay 30 fucking minutes so i even had nick diamond test it tried to buy one himself it took him 30 minutes just to get to the page where he had to submit more info and he finally just said fuck it he gave up okay so here's where the situation sucked even more we were supposed to drop these nfts in january during our birthday week Okay, me and Nick Diamond are both born on the same week, on the same year, okay, January 23rd and January 27th. But at that time, we didn't have a tangible item to drop with this, and I just felt like it'd be so fucking sick if we had a gold ball and a platinum ball to go with this, okay? At that time, in late January, okay, you could fart and videotape it on a GIF and it would sell for $100,000 minimum. I'm not fucking capping at all, okay? It's insane what was going on over there during that time, right? There were some of the biggest scams going on in the NFT world at the time, but we won't discuss that. Just saying, I'll let Baller Busters maybe one day shed light on that, but look, we decided to shop around to a few platforms. A lot of places are booked up, like NFTs, like uh, Nifty Gateways, like we're booked up for the rest of the year. Um, OpenSea wanted too much money as far as percentages. There's other different platforms. Finally, Nick got antsy and said, yo, bro, you know, I talked to the CEO of Mintable. They're legit. They do NBA Top Shot and all this other stuff and a few other big games. So I was like, look, man, fuck it. I think I, I've heard of Mintable. Cool. So I'm so busy with all the shit that's going on. I said, Nick, take the wheel and get it all the info and just let's fucking rock. Okay. So Nick has a team. You know, he's got an assistant, he's got advisors, everything. So they go on Zoom calls and talk to this dude and everything. They're like, yo, man, all he saw was green lights, okay? 
But what Nick left out was one very huge, important thing to me. And had I known about this, it would have been beyond a red flag. I would have changed our entire drop, okay, had I known about this issue. It's like imagine when you take, if you're a dude, okay, I don't know if for girls it might be different because you got your Kegels exercises and shit women have, you know, different, you know, powers down there and fucking in the, um, and anyways, <laughs> when guys take a piss, right? Let's say you began to take a pee. You really got to go pee. Like, fuck, I got to go to the bathroom. It's not like, oh, do I got to go? Okay, I'll go. No, no, I'm talking about you got to go and you're fucking standing there and now pee is coming out of your dick. There is no way to stop that stream, okay? I don't mean after you pass for, you know, piss for a little bit and you're like, okay, let me stop. No, I'm talking about you got to pee bad. Then one full second into it, you're like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to stop and I'm going to go fucking and, and I'll come back in, you know, an hour. Maybe I'll come back tomorrow. Nah, that can't happen, doctor, okay? So the NFT platform headquarters is based in Singapore, okay? Yes, Asia, all right? And our NFTs dropped at 8 a.m. Pacific LA time, all right? That means it's midnight, 12 a.m. in Singapore. And the CEO himself was the guy who was handling our drop, now, the issue is he fell asleep at 1 a.m. So we had no communication, no phone number, no host, no customer seller support to talk to at all whatsoever. Now, mind you, too, we all, we, we did this as a quick strike because I was like, you know what, man? Psh, bro, we've done drops. This ain't shit. Could do this shit in fucking our sleep three, four days in a tripping. Forgot about telling people you need to have cryptocurrency set up. To, that's really what you should, you know, you need to buy this shit with. Then number two, there needs to be somebody that can be there 24-7 while we're doing the drop, or at least in the first seven, eight hours, whatever. So when the drop happened, I personally figured, you know what, by watching other friends have NFTs drop, have a lot of my friends that drop, I figured, I was like, you know what, by 8.45 at latest, at the worst, if everything is just terrible and shit, 8.45, we should sell out, okay? Totally be sold out. Nope. Again, 100% transparency, okay? So the CEO emails us. We send the first email out within like 30, 40 minutes. Like, yo, was everything okay? Like, what's good? Like, can you tell us how everything's going? And he emails, well, he emails Nick. Nick's talking to him. Nick's dealing with all this. And he goes, hey, man, you guys have sold 16 uh, NFTs in the first 30 minutes, and I'm like, 60, bro, have you, are you fucking crazy? Are you, are you like, are you serious? Like, what the fuck's going on? And I'm thinking, yo, dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the end is here. That's it. You know, my, my shit is over. Boom, whatever. Now I'm capping myself. I know it's not fucking over. Okay. I'm like, what the fuck? And, you know, I let Nick deal with this. I had no clue until that moment that this guy is 16 hours ahead and at that point, obviously, there's nothing we could do about it. I didn't know about anything about his location until we had already been been dropped the NFT, okay? Now, there's nothing we could do at this point to stop it because this dude's asleep. So I knew off bat, no fucking way that this is happening, okay? As you guys know here, my autographs for over a year now, many of them, not me, I'm sorry, Every couple of weeks, I drop autographs for over a thousand dollars. Okay, they sell out, no problem. This is my very first NFT. It means it should mean something. Okay, and the balls alone are worth two hundred fifty dollars each. So th this is just the math is wrong. Everything is wrong. I tell Nick to email the guy and stop the NFT. Fuck it, cancel it. You know, fucking refund people their fucking money where the fuck it may be. Let's do it another time. I'm livid at this point. Okay, I'm actually fucking furious. Nick can't reach the dude. Nick also, at this moment, literally like at 9 a.m., he has a Saw drop collab, Saw the movie, with 21 Savage, and he feels bad, but really, like, there's nothing either one of us can do, okay? So I talked to one of my boys, Anthony, who always supports me and all my shit, and I'm like, yo, bro, did you buy one of the NFTs? He's like, yeah, dog, I've been trying. Said he tried three credit cards, screenshot it and shows me what the messages are saying. And literally it took him an hour 
and he still couldn't get a card to work. Tried three times. I have the text messages and everything, okay? So then he signs up for a Coinbase account and a Crypto.com account, and he couldn't get improved in time to pay for NFT. You got to send a selfie. You have to do certain things. Boom. You got to get your bank to approve it. And then if your bank doesn't approve it, you got to fucking send a wire or paper or have to deposit money into your account and not necessarily could you immediately transfer it to an Ethereum wallet and try to buy shit anyways. Look at about three hours into the drop, I decided to check my Instagram DMs. I don't really check them anymore because you know what? Most of the time, my DMs are people asking me for money. A bunch of people are like, you're a fucking faggot, da, 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 this and that, whatever. A bunch of people, it's like, you know, I don't really care, right? Very little gets me upset, but this shit had me hot, okay? So I start scrolling and about 95% of the DMs are saying that their cards got declined, okay? Over 100 easily, because I'm scrolling for almost 20 minutes, maybe even a couple hundred of people saying their cards got declined. Yo, what's up with this fucking shitty ass site? You know, blah, blah, whatever. And I'm not bashing Mintable, just telling you what these people were saying, okay? That their credit cards kept getting declined. And then my friend, Dan Fleischman, okay, who is pretty much not only Steve Aoki's business partner, owns a, a hobby shop, he is a like Steve Aoki's digital crypto manager pretty much, okay? He is the most fluent guy that I know in the crypto and NFT space. Dan actually teaches classes about cryptocurrency for free. He has been teaching crypto classes for five years, Okay, Dan calls me and says, yo, bro, he's tried 14 times to buy my NFT with a credit card because he didn't want to use the Ethereum at first because Ethereum's, you know, at a semi-high right now, pretty much over $4,000. He got in at the low hundreds and he's like, you know, I'm just trying to like whatever, but he wants to support and he's always been super down for the cause. I fucking love Dan. And again, this is literally the most legit dude that I know who knows his shit in crypto, and he helped Steve do his first NFT. Steve Aoki made $4 million on NFTs, right? Dropped them on Nifty Gateway. Anyways, so now I'm fucking fuming mad because Dan, I know, is not bullshit. I know, like, look, one, it's definitely not my fault, right? But it's my fault that I didn't ask Nick or this guy, I don't want to bring his name up, about having someone be our host, and make sure everything goes smooth for the first four or five hours. I thought 8 a.m. was definitely too early, but at the same time, if they did it at 11 a.m. Pacific time, it was just, it with the fucking Singapore thing, I would have never dropped it unless it was at least 10 a.m. their time so that the first few hours should have sold out. I, there's a couple things I could have done, but bottom line is I should have asked if someone would have been there, no matter what, phone that we get to talk to, WhatsApp, something, throughout this, the majority of the drop, okay? But at this point, it's 3 a.m. in the fucking morning in Singapore. They're dead asleep. Nobody is getting back to us via email. It honestly ruined my day, okay? And I know if my boy Dan Fleischman cannot get in, then nobody else is gonna even try that hard. Because if Nick Diamond even gave up, I'm like, man, fuck this, okay? Dan, by the way, bought my Mike Trout 101 Gold Project 2020 card, Okay, spent like 15 bands on that motherfucking card. He's had offers for like thirty, forty thousand dollars. Right? Dan has helped a lot of people. I'm not gonna get into it now, but anyways, Dan feels bad, hits me back. He's like, fuck it. You know what? I got some people to fucking, you know, throw some Ethereum into my wallet and uh, add some more. So he uses crypto and Dan buys three of my NFTs. Right. Now, seven hours later, I'm angrier than fuck. I'm just so bothered. Right. And I feel bad because my kids are like playing everything right there. They're like, hey, dad, you know, we're going to go out, boom. And I should be taking them outside to go to the park. But I was just like, didn't think this was going to happen. So it kind of changed the whole fucking energy of my whole entire day. So my wife can see I'm super irritated. She takes them to the park. Finally, around 9 30 a.m. in the morning in Singapore, right, which is like 5 30 hour time, whatever, here in LA, the dude, the CEO gets back to us and he tells us, his side of what's going on. He's like, yo, man, this is what it is, the KYC thing, da, da, da. I don't know what's going on. And he's low-key upset because we kind of sent him like five emails kind of attacking, low-key upset, like, yo, what's good? Where you at? Like, bro, what's going on? And I, I have to stop and be like, yo, bro, you're the CEO of a big NFT platform, 
okay? You have two guys with over 2.5 million social media followers and you had nobody to check in with us like at least every hour to make sure shit was going smooth. And then the guy says, look, I'm actually amazed. You guys had over 40,000 people on the site when we launched the NFT. 40,000 people to buy 475 NFTs. 40,000 people. He said 40,000 new accounts, over 40,000 new accounts were signed up onto his platform. And he's like, yo, there was a 0% conversion rate. And he was like, yo, man, I've never seen nothing like this before. I've never seen a conversion rate like this low like this. And I'm like, especially with that many people. And I said, bro, hold on. You, you don't see anything wrong with that? Being, being fully transparent. And I'm not lying about nothing. Okay. I'm like, bro, check this out. Just yesterday, I sold over $500,000 in hot sauce. Okay. Just yesterday, 24 hours ago. Okay. Yeah, it's $35 per bottle, whatever. It's nothing. But I've sold my autographs. So I just don't go to my website, bbdt.com. Okay. Look at the prices of what I'm selling. Okay. I sell out items for $500 in seconds. Thousands of items. Like, are you insane, bro? Like, Nick Diamond's last NFT release was actually priced higher and sold out in 50 minutes, right? On a, on an inferior platform. Okay. I was so fucking pissed. So he tells us, 36 NFTs have been sold. A majority of them, high majority of them were paid via, you know, using cryptocurrency. And like a couple of them were credit card sales, okay? So I tell him, cancel the NFT right now. I don't give, he's like, you sure you should wait? You know, we can make some, I'm not a dog. I don't want to make any money on this, bro. This shit's salted. Like my whole shit is tainted. Like you done ruined the mood, boo. All right? Like I call them boo, for real. Like if 24 hours expired and only 36 sold, Whatever, that's what it is anyways, but that's not the case, okay? 40,000 people didn't sit there and be like, oh, the price is too fucking high. Nah, cap. It's bullshit because I had people send DMs like fucking crazy, okay? What person in their right mind would keep going on trying to sell shit when each hour that passed, it was just becoming a dead issue, especially with the credit card situation, right? So told them to stop. They stopped. Okay, NFT sales will stop for the gold ones. And yes, I could have pushed it. I could have said, made another post and said, hey guys, check this out. Listen, we're having difficulty with the credit cards. You guys can only use Ethereum. At that point, it would just look so thirsty. It just looked, it, I was already crunchy. I was already salty, right? Only Ethereum is accepted at this point. Boom, please transfer money into your exchanges or your crypto wallets and try it that way. I was just so fucking over at that point. I told Nick, fuck this, I'm done. 36 NFTs in nine hours is just fucking gross, okay? But it's not our fault, but it it is our fault, right? Because of of what, you know, I could have, you know, did more research before, we were in a rush, you know, had four days to push it, no big deal. But I didn't ask any of the, you know, the right questions. Didn't ask, you know, thought this shit was going to be in New York, Texas, who no fucking knows. Never thought that the fucking host would have been fucking in Asia, okay? The good news now is that it's a much more rare item, okay? Because we didn't go the entire time. We pulled it. There's only 36 in existence, okay? I'm not going to do another NFT with my name on it until maybe the end of this year, and that's with the god Murakami. And I know for sure that's going to be gone in seconds, Right, but also the platform that we're using for that are guys who only accept crypto, period, and they already have you know pretty much they'd be pre sold and be gone. Okay, now if you were one of the 36 guys that got my NFT, we're going to sign all 36 balls and give you a COA certificate of authenticity. Right now, just to give you guys perspective. If we sold 475 gold balls, just the balls, no NFTs, okay, at $250 a ball, we would have made $120,000 easily and it had been sold out in a minute, okay? It's not about that. What it's about is we work really hard to get this NFT. We sat on it for months. It was fucking eating at us, right? And it was actually a sick NFT, okay? But fuck it, right? Now it's on for those who want to resell it later. And my boy just traded me one of the NFTs, decided to buy it, paid him $1,200 in Dogecoin. 
And um, by the way, the Platinum 1 of 1 auction sold for $13,000. So congrats to that winner. But now, why was I so mad? You know, because some people I could probably be like, yo, what the fuck is he so mad about? You know, he made money, cool, whatever. No, listen, because I work really hard to get where I'm at today. And I've worked for a long time, okay? To get my reputation to stand high with luxury items, high-priced items, even mid-priced merchandise, okay? Everything always sells out, okay? My next drop with Kingsford, right? That gold barbecue grill, that's going to sell out in under a minute, I guarantee it. And by the way, I can't control what a huge brand like that does. They would never fake sales. Doesn't even make sense. It would never. I just know off the hype alone how many people want to get this thing. It's going to do very well. And just going off my other network releases. But I'm not some 25-year-old punk who thinks he's cool and is wearing fucking chrome hearts and shit, whatever I want to fucking throw up when I think of that. And, you know, it's probably going to be fucking irrelevant and broke in five years. So it's also negative, blah, blah. If you look at the fucking actual statistics, what I'm saying is not even just an educated guess. It's a very, very high possible guess, okay? As each year has passed by, after I've turned 40, I've become stronger as a brand and I've actually become more relevant every year, which is extremely difficult to do at my age. So I'm not about to let something sabotage my namesake. Okay, people out there, yeah, sure, that's a stretch, da 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 motherfucker. It's like, yo, bro, people love to hate. It's just the weirdest thing in the world. No one's gonna think like you think, right? But would you walk into traffic if cars were coming directly at your way, okay? That's about as close of a comparison as I could think of. Why would you follow somebody that you didn't like? There's people I don't like, I block them. Celebrities, I don't want to see them post my timeline. I don't want to see their comments on people's pages. I block them. Like, this is, you know, like, I don't want that energy around. I don't want to see that shit. Like, why the fuck would I want to be on somebody? I couldn't imagine being on somebody's page or following somebody I don't like and then commenting like, oh, you fucking fag. Oh, you suck. You're weak. Yeah, sure, whatever. Like, I see people hate Vegas Day. Like, why do you guys follow? Like, why do you think about him, dude? Like, why? So I see people snickering, saying, yeah, whatever, boom. Tell me one time where I, I capped, where I had that. No, it's just hate, okay? If people weren't interested in shit that I was doing, I'd be talking literally into a dead microphone right now with no audience. It is public information, all right? Anyone can see my podcast rankings in their country, in the USA, of course, and see that we're always up top. I have the top entrepreneurship show on fucking Apple Pie. I'm in the top 10 every fucking week. Okay, I deleted a lot of my tweets regarding this NFT, okay? I took down the hard posts that I made, but if you just see, go to my Instagram right now and check out my Reels page, okay? Just check out my Reels page on Instagram. You'll see the videos in 24 hours got over 500,000 uh, views. Those two videos got over half a million views. Then my stories got another half a million easily, okay? So I had over a million views and engagement, so I'm gonna sit there and be like, oh, well, maybe they just wanna, no, bro, no. It's not it at all whatsoever. Anyways, listen, guys, I am so sorry that that was a super long winded breakdown. But guys, you have to understand how much I care about my name brand and it's very important to me. Okay. I care about my fans too. As you guys know, I interact with my fans and followers more than most people do. And I do a lot of giveaways. Honestly, I don't need to give away shit. I can just say fuck this and just, you know, open the floodgates and start making 50 $100,000 pieces again, you know what I'm saying? And be busier than shit. I'm not going to do that, okay? Just letting you guys know, I fuck with y'all. The podcast is something that's very important to me and interacting with you guys is very important to me. But anyways, BTB Army, I love you guys. I'm sorry. I need a Pokari sweat break real quick. So let's get a word in from our sponsor. And uh, yo, Miles, cue in some Lakey Lake. We'll be right back. Yo, BTB Army, what's good, y'all? I want to talk to you about our newest sponsor, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. 
Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Try meals ready in 20 minutes or less. Lightning prep recipes and quick breakfasts and lunches, perfect for your busy schedule. HelloFresh offers 25 plus recipes to choose from each week, from vegetarian meals to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy. With all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. HelloFresh has a wide variety of easy, delicious options for all three meals of the day, plus every snack and a special treat in between. I've been rocking with the vegetarian option for me and my family, and we love it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 12baller and use code 12baller for 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 12baller and use code 12baller for 12 free meals and free shipping. You can't beat that. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. So enough about that. That's done, right? On Saturday night, I was obviously flustered. I was completely taken out of my fucking whole body. My whole mind was gone everything. Told my wife, I was like, hey, listen, go get the kids dressed up. And let's go to our favorite place. The Americana. <laughs> um, no Cheesecake Factory this time. Uh, call my VIP host, Caruso Group. I'm like, hey, man, can you get us a table at Amici? And man, we get there and it is fucking packed. The Americana looks like 2017. No issues with the economy. It is fucking, I'm talking, it is person to person, but it was crazy packed, right? It was dope. Got to take pictures and say a bunch of uh, what up to a bunch of fans and all that shit and everything. And people are showing mad love and whatever. And so we get to Michi, and man, have I missed that place so much, okay? Luis, man, you were a fucking G. You were always so kind to me and my family. Um, you know, they got the fucking bar outside. They got the bar inside. They got the great wine selection. The kids love their pizza. Their pizza is so good. The pasta is off the chain. The only problem is I'm on that fucked up diet. But I had a beef tenderloin with the spinach and these fucking mushrooms that tasted like fucking butter and meat. It's just incredible. I invited my in-laws to come to us, you know, so we had this nice family Italian dinner and uh, we all had a great meal, ball of wine, you know, after we walked around. Uh, it was still daylight at 8 p.m., you know, walking around, did some light shopping, you know, everyone's happy and I just wanted to have a positive note to the end of the day, Right. So that the fucking entire day wasn't a total wash. But uh, while I was upset during the fucking day on Saturday, you know, I watched the NBA Hall of Fame ceremony. But again, I was so fucking just irritated and so confused and upset that I couldn't even focus on that. And to be honest with you guys, anytime I hear Kobe's name and I think about Kobe Bryant being dead, it just fucks up. I just, I just can't like even think. Like it's just so fucking, it's just the craziest shit you know, I know it's been over a year. I just can't wrap my head around the fact that Kobe's gone. Okay. So Sunday, I wake up later than I've ever woken up. Like I'm talking, it's been years, maybe five, six years that I've woken up at 7.55 in the morning. Okay. Wake up to a bunch of text messages from my boy, Paul, from all my crypto homies, right, showing me like the links to articles by analysts and crypto gurus and shit who are predicting Bitcoin to drop to $42,000. And most of the reason why, because of Elon. A lot of guys are saying it's not because of him. I don't give a fuck either single or whatever way. Bottom line is the shit is fucking tanking, it's dropping, and it's dropping a lot. And I'm like, oh, great, you know, fucking awesome. I had a great fucking shitty Saturday, and now Sunday is about to suck, Okay. Just a week ago, my crypto wallet was all good, right? We're back in the, Bitcoin got back in the 50s, right? But then this fucking asshole, Barry Silbert, right? Big fucking cocksucker. Him and all the Bitcoin maxis and a bunch of other dumb fucks, including I think Bill Maher had something to fucking probably do with this shit a little bit. They had to poke the bear. 
Just had to fucking poke the bear, right? Dude already said he has Asperger's, right? He don't give a fuck. Savage mode, okay? They had to poke Elon Musk. So Elon Musk woke up and he decided he chose violence, okay? He tweeted a few things. He's tweeting fucking nothing but facts. He's trolling motherfuckers, talking shit about Bitcoin. And pretty much, yeah, he said fuck Bitcoin pretty much, you know what I'm saying, in, in layman's terms, Okay? And he said that he's selling all Tesla's fucking Bitcoin shares, what put the fucking market into a frenzy. People are freaking out, okay? By the way, him, Tesla, whatever, they own billions, billions of dollars in Bitcoin. So the coin started to drop hard, okay? Immediately. I'm not fucking, fuck that bullshit. I traded 107 Bitcoin for Ethereum, all right? And by the way, Ethereum took a fucking dip not as bad as Bitcoin, but you know, I'm like, look, I have a lot of faith in Ethereum, so I'm not really tripping. But I kept 10 Bitcoins for later, just in case, whatever, you know, no big deal. I'm already way above my profit and everything, right? So if Bitcoin dips into the low 30s, I'm probably going to buy the dip. Don't know how much, but I'm going to buy, okay? I highly doubt it's going to get to the low 30s, but if it does, boom. But, you know, I ask myself, how mad could I really be? You know, like really, if you think about it, what I've made in the last 15 months, like how can I really be mad? Okay. But yeah, a week ago, I was up $2 million more in my crypto wallet, but fuck it. You know, again, I can't be greedy. Life is good. I made a big bag off of fucking cryptocurrency. Fuck it. It's time to work the other waves and wait for this bear market to come into play. Okay. Still believe there's going to be a little bit of a, well, I mean, maybe this is the correction that's going on. Again, you know, I'm not the most fluent person in crypto, but, you know, I've obviously made money and I've made the right decisions. We're not really dealing with a lot of long-term shit. You know, I've only been a year into this heavy of it, but I've been trading lightly on and off. Obviously, my store has crypto. We have a portfolio for IF and Co because we've been accepting it for fucking eight years. But anyways, Elon has pretty much shown the world in, you know, in the last few days, that he's really thinking about using Dogecoin to replace Bitcoin, okay? It's no fucking surprise. He's been talking to Dogecoin developers since 2019, okay? And in regards to Tesla, I'm talking like replacing it because he's already like made Dogecoin the main cryptocurrency for SpaceX, and you already see that Doge One project's going on. So this shit is looking for real, okay? So like I told a bunch of haters out there, Doge has a huge future ahead. Coinbase shit, this shit that's going on with Tesla. I haven't sold one single coin. Full transparency, okay? Please stop comparing Dogecoin to any coin that is newer than three years old, okay? Some of these coins are fucking brand new. Like, really? Like, fucking cum rocket and ass and milk. Like, get the fuck out of here, okay? Shiba Coin is still at a shit place, so I don't want to fucking hear about that bullshit. That coin is fucking trash and people have lost fucking money. Stop the cap. All right? Compare Shiba Inu coin to Doge is like comparing paper clits to fucking cheesesteaks. All right? Anyways, yeah. Crypto is pretty much down. Okay? Entire market except for ADA and Doge. Those two are holding strong. So that's just a game. Don't worry about it. Peaks and valleys, y'all. And uh, the founder of fucking uh, ADA, uh, Charles, man, if you guys can just search his Twitter and wow, he went off on Vegas, Dave. That shit was really fucking embarrassing, man. Super fucking embarrassing if I was fucking Vegas, Dave. That shit is crazy. But speaking of cheesesteaks, right? Didn't do that on purpose. It's just, that was the first thing I thought of and I guess it led into this. I asked my Instagram followers if I had any fans in Philly, because I don't really know, right? I've only been in Philly, what, probably twice in the last 10 years. And uh, if I had any fans in Jersey, and to my shock, I do. I got a shit ton of fans in Jersey, and I got a decent amount of fans in Philly. And, you know, obviously, Omi the Hellcat, he's from Philly. He's like, yo, man, we fuck with you out here, boom. But I'm like, all right, well, I don't know. Um, so I asked someone to bring me a cheesecake. I said, listen, man, if you guys want to get into one of my live podcast show, bring me a cheesecake. I'll give you some merch and let you in the show for free. Now, mind you guys understand that, you know, um, well, I'll get into that in a second. I just said, look, anyone bring me a cheesesteak from Gino's or Pat's. And those are places I've been eating at fucking, you know, for 30 something years. And to be honest, I like their cheesesteaks. Okay. 
Then you got fools talking crazy. Oh man, you know, real Philly. This not, like, dog, that's cool and everything, right? What the fuck are you getting mad about? Oh, we emotional about our shit. Like, dog, I ain't tr- I love that. Like, I rep LA, it's on my back. If you guys sit in and out, it's trash. I ain't tripping. Like, you know, I'm not going to get emotional about a spot. If I owned it different, all you motherfuckers own Pats and Genos and all that shit? No, fuck out of here, man. Like, those spots suck. That ain't real South Philly shit. That ain't real South Street shit. All right, dog, cool. They're like, you got to eat at Angelo's or Della Sandro's. And, you know, to be truthful, I've never been to either one of those places. Never heard of them either, okay? The last cheesesteak that I had in Philadelphia, okay, was a few years ago. And there's a spot called Ishka Bibbles. And actually, to tell you the truth, the shit was fire, okay? And Jim's is always really good too. Just didn't even think about bringing it up, but it's not that deep to me. I'm just saying, okay? You want to fucking get in the show for free, whatever, boom, bring me a fucking cheesesteak. It's just something fun for conversation. Now, a lot of you don't know this, but before the pandemic, Miles and Jordan and I had a small live podcast tour planned. And then COVID-19 put a monkey wrench into all those plans, okay? So now with shit opening back up, and things are cool, all of us are vaccinated, fucking me, shit, Rappaport, fucking Miles, Jordan, even the young shooters probably, uh, I think, I'm not sure, maybe Jordan could confirm that, I don't know, but I'm going to explore this live podcast tour again, and so I'm thinking, you know, we'll hit LA first, then San Francisco, or, you know, maybe LA, then San Diego, then San Francisco, right, or it doesn't really matter because I'm not doing like in back-to-back dates, whatever, but then, you know, I want to do New York, and then when I'm in New York, I want to do either Jersey or Philadelphia, you know, on the East Coast end of things, okay? If shit goes well, I'll try Miami, maybe Atlanta, maybe Houston, you know what I'm saying? Maybe have Jimmy Boy host Houston with me. I don't know. I'll figure out maybe Slim Thug. I don't, I'm not sure. And then on the third stretch, or that'd be the fourth stretch, I'll do like Seattle and Vancouver and maybe uh, Phoenix and Vegas, okay? Now, the venues that we've been looking at, that we were looking at back then, these live podcast shows will be at smaller places, you know, where they do stand-up comedy and things like that. Places that maybe hold like 250, 300 people, 500 people max, like an old theater or something, you know. There's actually a really dope old theater in Albany. I don't know if that works. I don't know. But it'll be interesting for sure to find out. I have never done a live podcast before, like in front of an audience. It'll be my first time. So um, in New York City, uh, some of you may or may not know that Mike Rapport has moved back to New York full time, right? He's hasn't been full time there in decades, right? So I would probably have Michael Rapport co-headline the show with me, and he's done a lot of these, so he you know, he knows what's going on. And by the way, speaking of Michael Rapport, go check out our episode we dropped a few days ago. Um, look, rap is the most disruptive motherfucker that I know. It's not stupid. He plays dumb so here and there. Very, very, very amazing podcaster. Yes, there's things that I might not agree on with, dude, but podcast is fire. It's a very good interview. It's my third time on the I Am Rapport podcast, and it's only on the Luminary app. And of course, that is Dust Brother Production Family. So go check that out. Oh, yeah, there's this reality show that, uh, I don't know. I used to love this fucking show. Shout out to my boy Eric Kabichi, man. I don't even know if you guys, if you guys are in LA, then you guys are a little older. You remember he was the host of a radio station called The Beak. They're the biggest like hip hop urban radio station there is. And his co-host, he was the main host and the co-host was Lala. Yeah, Lala Anthony, you know, the fucking, and she didn't look like, you know, she looks right now. Lala looks fucking incredible right now, but she was just like, whatever, it's like, cool, you know, like Lala started doing some acting here and there, boom, started hanging out Kim Kardashian, she married Carmelo Anthony and they had a baby and changed her whole shit. But I'm not mad at her at all. It's just crazy. Anyways, me and Eric Kubici used to watch this show called Storage Wars. Okay, it's on Annie. And I fucking love this show. Like we, we, I was like addicted to it, right? Like Barry and fucking Dave and all these guys, whatever. So there's a couple on the show named Jared and Brandy. Okay, Brandy Passante. I fucking love this girl, Brandy. I don't know what it is, man. It's just funny. I just, I was like, God damn, she is so fucking hot, okay? So the rumor is that she used to be a stripper and Jared worked security at that strip club and some people were like, what the fuck is Ben even talking about right now? Anyways, someone told me that the show was staged and the shit that they were finding in the storage units is fake and whatever 
And then that kind of tainted things for me, so I stopped watching it. But I definitely watched a few seasons. It was definitely, like, I watched a few seasons, and I was, like, a hardcore fan, okay? In fact, I fucking saw that dude Dave Yup at fucking the Rose Bowl, and I bought a fucking cup, right? So anyways, so I guess the reason why I'm bringing this up is I saw on TMZ that Brandy and Jared got divorced, and they haven't been to, they have been together for over two years or something, but they kept it on the low so they could film the show and still film seasons and make their money. Well, I guess... Jared got upset and, I don't know, pulled up to some bar in Orange County and saw Brandy there, and they got into a fight, and I guess he put hands on Brandy, okay, and thought it was all sweet and thought shit was all cool, whatever, boom, but then I guess the police came later, and somehow, somewhere, which is crazy, the DA in Orange County picked up the case, so when the DA picks up the case, you're fucked, right, no matter how much fucking whatever, you're fucked, so he may do some time. Right, Jared might fuck around and get you know go to jail, but uh, both of them give me heavy Orange County vibes, right? Like Huntington Beach, like City of Orange type shit, like stoop, like Stanton, like just that white trash vibe. But it was like Jared for sure, one hundred percent shops at Tilly's. Okay, he definitely wears the same glasses as fucking Guy Fieri. This dude is a trip, man. He just he just cracks me up. Like I know a bunch of dudes like this. It just but anyways. I just wanted you guys to know that I had used to have a crush on Brandy, and uh, it sucks that they divorced. Fuck it, you know. I know they got some kids, but on the flip side, some good news: our very own Miles Davis of the Dust Brothers is getting married next weekend. Miles, am I okay to say that? Is all right? Is that cool? All right, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm really happy for you, bro. I'm super hyped to go to the wedding and check that shit out. I'm, I'm yo, I might, you know, I might turn up. You know what I'm saying? You, you could drink vodka and not get no calories out that motherfucker, you know? So anyways, congrats on an order for my brother, Miles Davis. That's really his name, Miles Davis, and he's Asian. He's mixed. This is crazy. Even though he's a Niners fan, I'm very excited for my bro. He's, uh, you know, about to fucking, uh, he's about to do this, okay? So if you guys, you know, you already know I follow him. Now, show some love to Miles. He don't really do it much on social media, but show some love. Salute, my G. All right, man, a few things before we sign off. One of them is probably the most fucking important thing on this fucking podcast, and I waited towards the end, is my fucking Lakers are looking strong, all right? My Lake Show is on a five-game win streak, all right? That's it. We fucking play seventh place. It's too fucking bad, so we are in the play-in tournament, okay? And the play-in tourney begins tomorrow, and we got Steph Curry and the Warriors minus Clay. Okay. I ain't worried about Draymond at all whatsoever. Let me tell you, we look good for real. There is no way the Warriors take us out of this game. I'm telling you, I'm feeling it. When you see Kyle Kuzma throw himself a lob off the backboard, you know shit different. Okay. AD, LBJ, even THT, fuck it. <laughs> All right. Look, I'm hyped. And by the way, don't sleep on DB picks. Okay. They are on fucking fire right now. In the last four days, they went 25 and 9, which is fucking insane. They've had five in one days, six in one days. They did three and three. And then just yesterday, they did 11 and four. And two of those fucking games were down to the wire. Could have been any other way. If you want to make some money, make sure you hit up my boys, the Dust Brothers. Hit them at DB Picks. Okay, the NBA playoffs are about to start. You'd be a fucking fool to not hit them up for picks. But my Lakers are looking strong. I really do think that we fucked this shit up. Nobody want to see us a seven-game series right now. I feel like LeBron is cock strong. Pause. That shit, he's looking like a motherfucking diesel truck right now. Okay. Now, uh, pivot. Another thing, guys, a week from today, technically eight days from today, I will be in the Bay Area, okay, on Tuesday, May 25th, not tomorrow, but next Tuesday, I will be launching my Jonas B. strain and my Cat Dick strain with my Cookies family at Cookies in Hayward, California. This will be the first time we do our official launch. It's been sitting around. They have been selling it and it's been selling out because we're not, you know, putting out a lot, but it's just fire and people love it. And if you guys seen the video I posted the other day, that shit ain't no joke. Okay. More details to come. Just 
pay attention, you know what I'm saying? I'll be posting some shit on my social and everything, right? It's going to be a good time. So if you're in the Bay next week or if you live in the Bay, pull up. I'm going to have a DJ. I'm going to have merch. And those, for those of you who really know about that dank, okay, just know that Skypack Farms, my farm, okay, is the home of Gary Payton and Cereal Milk, probably two of the most famous strains in the fucking business right now, okay? So you know my strains ain't no fucking joke. Nothing but pure gas, okay? Don't forget, next Tuesday, Cookies and Hayward, the Korean John Cusack will be there live in the flesh, all right? This Wednesday, I will be on the Wine and Weed podcast which is my boy Stilo Brim from Ridiculousness, right? He's a black dude on Ridiculousness. He has a podcast. I went in there, did a show with him. Uh, we get into a whole bunch of shit, and it's on video. So, you know, you get to see, like, you know, visual shit. Obviously, I know we're going to get into that. Y'all just chill. We're going to go into video soon. I'll send a YouTube link when the episode airs. You know, check it out this Wednesday. Wine and Weed Podcast. It was a good show, man. This Thursday... On BTB, we have a real living legend. My boy Edison Chen is my guest this week, okay? For those of you who don't know who he is, he's not only an icon in the Asian community, but he's actually, this guy was the Leonardo DiCaprio of China, right? He's the owner of a huge streetwear brand in Asia called Clot. He owns stores and all over through fucking China called Juice. He has a juice store in LA too. He's one of the first creators to make a bare brick 1,000%. Right, he's part owner of V Loan. He's made brands like Anti Social Club blow up. So much different shit. Dude is really an actual legend. I'm fucking excited to have him on the show, and I can't wait for you guys to hear all that. But yo, guys, that is all the time we have for today. Okay, I really hope you guys enjoy today's show. I know I ranted quite a bit, but I need you guys to understand every dimension of what Ben Baller is as a brand namesake. All that shit. Okay, all right, all right, yo, please. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And please tell your friends to hit that subscribe button. We got another huge giveaway coming soon only for BTB listeners. All right. I love y'all. Yo, Mr. Lakey Inspired, please take us to the moon, fam. All right, y'all. Peace. Peace.